Welcome to another edition of Medical Device Packaging TV. This program is brought to you by Vanderstahl Scientific. Join us today as we explore together important issues surrounding sterile and critical packaging. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Medical Device Packaging TV. For sealers, it's very important. You do not want your, your Teflon wearing out. You've got to make sure that your, your Teflon uh, or glass covering is actually clean. It doesn't have any burn marks in it. If it has burn marks, it means that you're, there's something going on with your, your wire that's no good or the springs that are holding your wires in place. So you've got to have preventative maintenance to make sure that all the the parts are clean and fresh. Uh, the, the silicon rubber that they use for uh, cushioning, it tends to get brittle with time. You need to understand the um, stability of these, of these pieces to make sure that they actually operate correctly and that you uh, keep them fresh so that you have a consistent seal that, that meets what you validated. For pouch seals, yes, that's the, the one that everybody's using. Even the ASTM, um, excuse me, the ISO standard reflects what the ASTM standard has in it with a slightly different uh, timing, but you just, as long as you make sure you're consistent on how, what your speed is for your, your pull apart and you, and you set it up right, that's the best test, that, test method there is right now for seal strings. On a, a DOE, the, the sample size is different than what you would do for a validation test. And what I generally do for a DOE is a relatively small number. It could be 3 to 10, depending upon how much sealed testing I can actually get done with the different parameters that are available. And then from that, we can come up with what we think the optimum seal parameters are. And then I actually go in and do a validation to make sure that I didn't miss something because I used such a small sample size to set up the DOE. I haven't had as much problems with medical device companies understanding quality as much as I have when I've been in other types of companies. You need to educate your manufacturing people on why the quality is so important and, and what's going on. So I have little training sessions that I work with with the line workers to make sure they understand why this quality uh, requirement is there and what could happen if they don't actually monitor it. So to me, training your, your workers to understand that and making sure that the uh, manufacturing supervisors and managers understand that you're not there to try and slow them down. You're tr there to make sure that you have an excellent package for your end user that has no problems. I do find that there are IQs pieces missing, and that's why um, on the other video segment I, I tried to give an idea of some of those things that you need to look at for your IQ. Make sure your user requirements are set up. I'm not, it's, it's been all over the map on what they might miss or, or include with the um, IQ on the equipment, but the best I have found is when people actually sit down and think about what they actually need in the equipment and write it out so they can make sure that the equipment actually meets those requirements and they do that before buying something that uh, don't tend to see quite so many issues with missing pieces. It's, that's a good way of doing it. I've never thought of trying it that way, and I might use that myself from now on. <laughs> the, um, the thing that I have found is 
finding my minimum and maximum seal strengths with the OQ and then putting it through a performance test actually tells you what's your minimum that you should be shooting for. That one pound uh, seal strength is an urban myth. The FDA is starting to question it more and more. So if you are saying a minimum of one pound but your process is running with five pounds minimum, don't try and say one pound is your minimum unless you've actually tested it down there. The FDA wants to see it at your production process parameters and what your material should be doing. And uh, you, you need to run your equipment and with your uh, actual OQ specified in there to make sure it works right. Yes, it can, uh, having it a little too wide, a little too narrow, or if you take a pair of scissors and try and cut it and you're a little bit crooked in one area but straight in the rest, you will get seal results that don't make sense. Because you're trying, you can actually get normal seal strength data, um, and a lot of people don't look at normality when they're doing their statistical sampling or, or review of their average and standard deviation with their samples, but you can. But it is difficult to make sure that uh, if you're not getting normal, what is causing that? And lots of times it's because you haven't cut your samples right. I had one company that I actually uh, validated the ASTM method in, and I had to um, qualify 14 different technicians to do this test. Well, I found I had one guy that they couldn't cut a sample for the life of him. He could pull the sample, but I found with his cutting and pulling, or his cutting and anybody else trying to pull the test, it just didn't work. And I didn't understand that because we had consistent um, way of, of cutting the samples at that point in time with a um, TMI paper cutter, but he couldn't do it. So we had to disqualify him from cutting samples. And then we had another person who could cut fine, but he couldn't mount the sample properly in the grips and pull and get consistent results. So we had to disqualify him from actually doing any types of um, seal pull tests. So you have to validate your equipment and make sure your operators can actually run it properly and then your, your data comes out better. This program is brought to you by Vanderstahl Scientific. Discover why organizations like the Department of Defense, NASA, and the Center for Disease Control make Vanderstahl Scientific a prime partner. Each episode, Medical Device Packaging TV brings more important insight from industry experts. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Medical Device Packaging TV.